Hey guys, I'm Bryson here, and money is money. Paper is paper. However, the way you earn money is going to make a massive difference, okay? A 100K salary is a lot more different than me, for example, making $100,000 from passive income, from being self-employed, or for example, from having a business. Now, this video right here is based on the book I read when I was 19 years old, a very long time ago, called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You probably heard about it. Sold over a million copies, Robert Kiyosaki. Talking, the godfather of finance. And by the way, it's a great book, not a perfect book, so read it with discretion. However, in this video, I'm going to teach you exactly the best way to turn your taxable income into non-taxable income so that way you get to keep a lot more of it and also not take that much risk okay because when you have a job and that's all you have and you spend all your money before you know it it's kind of like, okay, I'm gonna be here forever. But if you're able to take some of that money and put it into assets that make you more money to cover all your bills, then you have a lot more freedom. That is what I'm gonna teach you right here in this video. And on top of that, if you guys are new here, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you're notified. On top of that, also destroy the like button. Now, the very first thing is, guys, I find this very interesting, okay? But my mentor, Warren Buffett, the man himself, he pays around 17.7% when it comes to overall taxes. When I was in college working, work studying, and having like a job at the gap, you know how much I paid? Around 20 to 30% in tax. Well, not well, maybe like 24%. Let's be more realistic, okay? Around 20 to 24%, not including the state taxes over in New York, okay? I paid a lot of money in taxes. So, how is it possible that Warren Buffett is able to only pay 17.7% in taxes? The answer is fairly simple because qualified dividends and long-term capital gains are taxed at a much lower rate and in my opinion it's a crazy low rate okay and and it makes sense okay because you're using this money to make you more money so the money's making you the money but you're also taking a lot of risk and you could lose your money and not everybody can actually do that however let's say for example warren buffett right now real story true story he pays himself not a million dollars a year only a hundred thousand dollars a year. You might say that's a lot, but remember, the guy is worth over a hundred billion dollars, and all he pays himself a hundred thousand dollars a year. Now, if I paid myself a hundred K from qualified dividends or long-term capital gains, okay, that would put me in the long-term capital gains tax bracket of only around 15%. So effectively, all I would have to pay is just 15%. While, for example, okay, crazy idea here, if I made that money from a job as a single person, I would pay a federal rate around 24%, not to mention Social Security and Medicare, around 7.65%. And on top of that, also state tax. If I live in California, guess how much that would be? Around 9.3%. And that's how you turn $100,000 into only $71,257. Just like that by living in California. Pretty crazy. While if I earn that money from my assets, my investments pay me dividends, guess what? I would only pay $15,000. Basically, I'm saving around half the money by earning money this way. Now, the question is obvious. Tommy, okay, so what do I do here? And how do I start making money from dividends and my assets, my investments to pay me this money this way? I pay less in taxes and also it's passive, so a lot less work. The answer is, you don't change the source of the income. Meaning, if you have a job right now that pays you 40,000, 100,000, the answer is you don't quit and say, I don't wanna work here because I pay too much in taxes. The answer is that would be stupid because you still need to make money. And that job, I strongly always believe jobs are great. Jobs are your initial angel investors. That's where your initial money is going to come from. However, what you do with the money is going to make a big difference. With the difference between, for example, from your income and your expenses, the leftover money, that's what you should be using to basically put that money towards assets that are actually going to pay you passive income that can be basically taxed at a very low rate through qualified dividends and also long-term capital gains taxed. Now, how do you do this? Well, step number one, guys, okay? Step one is 
calculate your monthly expenses, okay? For me, I only spend right now around $2,000 per month. And that's me being a little higher than usual just to estimate my expenses a little higher. You always want to do that, okay? So for me, it's $2,000 and I include there shelter, utilities, groceries, and transportation. Not going out to eat every single night, not going out to travel to Hawaii every single year, whatever it is, none of that stuff, okay? Just the basics, $2,000 a month. Now, step two is you want to multiply that number by 12. That way you get the yearly. So for me, obviously, $2,000 multiplied by 12 gives me $24,000. Pretty obvious stuff. Now, step three is you want to divide that number by 0 0.04. Now, let me explain here, okay, guys, because I know some of you guys are confused with percentages. It's fairly simple. So if for me, my expenses are 2000 multiply by 12, 24,000, divide this number, divide it by 0 0.04. Everyone divides it by 0 0.04, the same percentage, don't worry about it, and click equals. This gives me a very big number. What does this number represent? It represents the amount of money I have to have in my investment portfolio to be able to receive around $24,000 in passive income. Because then, okay, the way I invest, step four, by the way, is you want to pick the right assets to pay you all this money in passive income. That way, you pay less in taxes. And on top of that, it's passive. So if you want to, you could quit your job. But the idea is, guys, okay, when I'm investing into my retirement fund or my brokerage account through the stock market, and by the way, if you guys don't know, I invest into index funds, large cap US stocks, international large cap stocks, also small cap US stocks. On top of that, also real estate REITs, and lastly, emerging stocks, okay? These are all index funds. If you're confused, that's fine, don't worry. I have a link down below to M1 Finance. When you click that link, it shows you exactly what I invest my money into. And if you wanna copy it word for word, you can copy it if you want to. And this portfolio pays me around 12% a year on average, and on top of that, 2% in dividends. So if I'm making 12% plus 2% from um, dividends, and I only take 4% from my profit, guess what happens? It means I will not run out of money for a very long time. If studies showed, it should last you a minimum of 33 years going through the worst financial crisis ever. That is the main idea. So by doing this right here, you know exactly how much you spend, the annual cost, how much you need in total in your portfolio, and on top of that, you pick the right assets. If you wanna go to M1 Finance, copy my portfolio, or copy it over into your 401k, that's fine with me, or your Roth IRA, don't worry, I'm not gonna charge you anything. And on top of that, guys, remember this one thing, okay, guys, if you see this massive big number, don't worry, every building, every wall was built one brick at a time, okay? It's, things take time, it's fine, you'll be able to do it, don't worry, you don't need to make 100K per year. Now, real example, true story here, my life right now, um, just this year, I made nearly $4,000 in dividends, and on top of that, nearly $40,000 off of unrealized gains from my portfolio. So obviously, okay, if I sold like half of my profits from what I actually made, I could basically pay my expenses and call it a day and only be taxed around 15%, okay, because that's awesome, okay? That's what you actually want to build up to. Now, some tips that I can give you to get to that number a lot faster, which by the way are, once you do get to a large amount of money in your retirement account, it's okay to, if you understand and you know exactly what you're doing, to diversify into other assets. That's fine if you know exactly what you're doing. And on top of that, to lower your expenses, okay? If you have a paid off home, a very low like mortgage, all these things are gonna help you out a lot, okay? So that's why I always say, okay, you invest 10, 20%, for your retirement fund, and then you go ahead and put the rest of the money towards the mortgage. That way, once you're done there, your cost of living goes down drastically by a lot. Now, here's the next question, guys, okay? How do you transition, okay? And this is where the big part of rich dad, poor dad comes into play. And there's something that he calls basically quadrants, okay? Now, by the way, don't worry. I'll tell you exactly how much you need to invest to get to your goal 
at the time you actually want to get to it, whether it's in 10 years or 20 years or 40 years. Don't worry, I'll give you my secret website that I basically use in order to figure out exactly, hey, I need to have $600,000 like Tommy, but how much do I need to invest monthly to get to that amount in let's say 10 years or 20 years? Don't worry, I'll tell you in a second. But first, I wanna show you these quadrants, okay? Now these are called income quadrants, or that's at least what I call them, okay? I call them income quadrants. Now, right here, guys, are the quadrants. Let me go ahead and zoom in if I actually can, and then boom, we are in. Now you have, for example, the E quadrant, the B quadrant, the I quadrant, and the S quadrant. The E quadrant stands for employee. And we know if you are an employee and you make 100K, that turns into $71,000 if you work, for example, in California. Crazy taxes, okay? We know that, for example, if we get $100,000 from capital, well, long-term capital gains, or for example, from qualified dividends, it turns into like around 85,000, meaning we get to keep a lot more of our money. This is the best way, by the way. But as a business owner, 100K could mean, hey, I made 100K, but I took a lot of risks. There's also the cost to make this money, all the employees and everything else, okay? So there are additional costs when it comes to having your own business. On top of that, being self-employed, you will pay all of your FICA taxes yourself because your employer will not pay half of it. So whenever you pay Social Security and Medicare, which is around like 7.65%, guess what? Your employer is paying half. So when you don't have an employer, you're paying it all yourself, which is around like 15.3%, if I'm not mistaken, which is a lot of money, if you ask me, up to $136,000, if I'm not mistaken, okay? That's the idea. I know these numbers because I'm an accountant, so I'm always trying to remember these numbers all the time. But overall, most people, what they want to do is back to the quadrants here. They want to go from being an employee, quit this, go into self-employed or start a business, okay? Remember, self-employed and business owners, this takes on a lot of risk, okay? Because you could make it or you could not make it. You can have very slow times or you could have very bad times, okay? That's how things work here. But if you have a good job, and by good job, I mean three things. A job that pays you a lot of money, a good amount, okay? A job that you actually enjoy and a job that you're actually good at, then it's okay to work that job. And I call a good job anything above like $40,000, to 60 to 100K. 100K is an amazing amount of money from a job that you actually enjoy and has all the aspects to actually give you what you actually want. Now, the idea is that once you're done calculating your income minus your expenses, you take all that extra money and you put it into here having money work for you, becoming an investor. Now, for me, that means index funds. For you, it could be, for example, hey, I wanna invest into real estate. I usually recommend like index funds is a lot more passive, requires a lot less work. Now, some people, what they like to do is say, hey, what I wanna really do is take my employee job, earn that money, and put it, for example, into starting a business or becoming self-employed, that's fine. But I would only do that after I do two other things, okay guys? Invest 10 to 20% of my money into my retirement fund and pay off an additional 10 to 15% with my income into my mortgage to pay it off faster. If you have money left over, it's okay to try to build your business aside with the extra time you actually have. And it is okay to start off small. You don't have to get a business loan, start a business. You don't have to do all that stuff. Just start off on a small scale. For me, when I graduated in accounting, I got a job, okay? With that job and my skills, I started a little business and that business gave me a lot of money. And with that money, it gave me flexibility to say, hey, I'm gonna do YouTube full time because I make money in a very passive way in a sense. And then once YouTube worked out, I was able to say, I'm gonna stick to YouTube now. But I always had money coming in, okay? Remember, your job is going to be your first angel investor. That is where the initial money is gonna come in for you to be able to become an investor. Now, I haven't forgotten here, okay guys? I'm gonna show you exactly how you calculate exactly how much money you're going to need to make this whole thing actually happen, okay? So, you wanna go on Google and you wanna type in savings goal calculator and click enter, okay? And you go right here to the investor.gov link, you click it, and it takes you here. Now remember that number that you got once you have your monthly, then your annual, you divide by 0.044%. That number, you plug it into here because that's basically gonna be your savings goal. For me, that is $600,000, okay? Now, 
once you put that number in there, it says how much money are you gonna start your investments off with, okay? So let's say all I have is $1,000, or let's say $100, okay? I have 100 bucks, that's all I have right now to invest. And then, how much time do you wanna give this money to actually grow, okay? By what point do you actually wanna get there? The answer is, I'm gonna say, I wanna get there in 20 years. Okay, that's my goal. In 20 years, I wanna be retired, make all that passive income, and not have to worry about anything. And then, let's say I'm gonna be making 12%, okay? And click Calculate. It tells me, hey, Tommy, if you wanna get there, you're going to have to invest $692.82. If I wanna do it, for example, in 30 years, guess what? It's gonna be only $200, okay? That's the idea. The last time, the sooner you wanna get there, the more money you're going to have to invest, obviously. The longer you wanna take, the less money you're going to have to invest. Remember, as long as you require less and less money by having no debt, by having an emergency fund, by investing money and also trying to pay off your mortgage early, once you have no debt, you have a paid off mortgage, your cost of living goes down by a lot. So your monthly expenses, it changes to a lower number which in the end means you're going to need a less amount of money, which basically means you're going to be able to get there a lot faster because your income is gonna stay the same. If there's one tip I could give you guys for this video is, always live below your means. You should always have money left over. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, you need to get a budget. But guys, overall, this is this video. It's about, be you're an employee, you earn money that way, but take your extra money and put it into your investment so that way you can basically convert it into passive income and you also pay a lot less money in taxes. And those are the four quadrants also by Robert Kiyosaki. And remember, in order to make money, it takes knowledge, it takes skills, it takes time, and lastly, it's always gonna cost you some level of taxes, okay? We're all gonna pay taxes, but don't take a job because the taxes. Don't do a business because the taxes. No, you need money. So go get a job. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to do so. The link is down below. Calls are free, by the way. On top of that, also, if you want to follow me on Instagram, the link is right here. Well, my Instagram is at Tommy Bryson. More content here. My here's my face. Click subscribe. Long-term team is out. Hopefully, this video helped you in some way.